Hello, everyone. Uh, today we'll be looking at the integration of um, any REST service uh, with Graph database. And uh, we will be looking specifically at how to create a node, um, add a wrap to that node, and add a label. Um, this is just a high level of our demo. So uh, let's switch right into our design studio. So here um, you see uh, the first integration or operation, and we call it a chain operation, because we will be performing multiple steps here. Uh, so first, uh, create node step um, is right here. We are using uh, a RESTful um, API to connect to our graph database. And uh, for our graph database, we will be using, as an example, our Neo4j. Uh, that's uh, one of the uh, graph database available out there. Um, so as I mentioned, we will be using our HTTP connection. So this is uh, connecting to uh, the RESTful API. So we have the URL. It's a basic authentication. And as far as the options here, we're just going to specify the content type of application and channel. So the first step, uh, we will be passing some information to create a node. Um, then we'll be parsing the response uh, as the node gets created. And this is just to kind of uh, add some additional information to our operation log. We'll be using one of our functions, writing the response to operation log to help us debug and see what information is actually being created. And then the next two steps are um, part of the uh, script here. So here, if we double click, you see that we are using run operation um, to call the um, other two operations to add a label and to um, add a route. So this is all manageable uh, right here within the script. And uh, as part of that run operation, you see that now we added two additional uh, calls where uh, we're using, again, a different URL and we are actually using variables for that. You see that the, um, here we see the URL as a variable. So if I scroll down here, um, that's where uh, that would be uh, passed to. So the URL is being passed, and this is a post, again, using the same content type. So now the other thing, what I wanted to mention, we are using a variable that's called resource. So anytime you create a node, uh, you can use uh, one of the, uh, define these as node names. So in this case, um, I used metal detector in the past, and now for the new, um, um, actually, let's create a new one. So we're going to call it, uh, in this case, it's um, elevator part, one, two, three, four. Um, and then we also created one metal detector, 5987. We can search and find that in our graph database um, when we go into the graph database. So uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to run this. And let me just quickly switch to um, our node. Neo uh, J4. So uh, I do have a query uh, where we can uh, put in after we run our um, integration, we're going to check to see right here in Neo 4 j uh, database, and uh, we'll be able to see the new nodes that are being created. So let's switch back to our studio. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to run this uh, manually. Um, we can't put this, this can be put on schedule, so any schedules can be created here. Uh, if need be, and um, this could be put on schedule. Now, we are assuming that uh, the source here, it can be anything. It could, the information can come from a RESTful API call. Um, it can come from a database. So uh, anything can put in front of here. And uh, uh, you know we can uh, uh, get the information from a source system and then create a node in uh, the database. So let me run this real quick. And then we'll see the results here as soon as this is complete. We should get the, hopefully, the green checkbox. And that will tell us that, um, yes, it looks like we got created. And because we are writing to the operation log, uh, we can see that uh, we just added a new node. And this is the name uh, of that node, elevator part 1234. So why don't we do this? Let's copy. Uh, 
And then we're going to switch back here and I'm just going to replace this and then run. Okay, so it looks like uh, we have, double click on it, it is connected. So we have one that is connected to the node. Let me just move this out of here so you can see that um, this is a route that was added. It's part of, this is the, the name, it's part of the label. It's attached to the main node. Um, so this is the uh, how the graph database looks like. Well, in this case, like I said, we're using, uh, this is an example, uh, but that's how you would create a node and um, add a route and a label to it using uh, a RESTful API calls and uh, there are different URLs that are being used depending on what you're trying to do. And also, as I mentioned earlier, the source can be pretty much any system we can connect to to get the data out um, and then do the, the transformation uh, from the JSON into any destination target that we have. Um, quick thing here on the left is where we can also um, add some error handling. So for example, if you want to add um, an SMS here or send an SMS that um, it ran successfully. You can also send a Slack message. Um, it's pretty easy. So all of these are decoupled. So let's say if we want in the end of uh, when we create a node or when we actually create a route, we can uh, right click here and say on success. Uh, we want to uh, select existing and then we maybe want to send an SMS message and notify a group of people or someone um, that the uh, node was created successfully and the route was added. So it's pretty easy. Again, uh, we are using one of the um, applications out there. It's called Clevo and that exposes the RESTful API calls. So all I need to do is just get the uh, URL. So it's pretty easy to configure. Same thing goes with, uh, you can configure any other alerts. So for example, we can send out emails. Uh, I do have a few emails set up here. So let's say, um, if we want to do on failure, I want to send an email, select existing, I'm just going to do an error message here. Um, and then the error message can be sent out as well if something went wrong. Uh, and if you look at that error message, it can be sent to a group of people or an individual. We use um, the uh, variables here as well. Um, and then it'll take the operation name, so you don't have to short code that. And it will take the error message that uh, was received. So there are a lot of um, options here. You can also create, if you use any, uh, for example, uh, case tracking, uh, you can create a JIRA, ServiceNow, anything. So it'd be the same idea. You would just create an operation connecting to that. And then based on success or failure, you can just send notifications out there. And then the last thing I wanted to um, uh, cover here is another operation that we've created just to show an example is um, a query. So um, here what we're doing, we're actually querying that graph database and getting the response out. Um, it can go anywhere. You can get a query of the data and send it to another target. In this case, just for the demo purposes, we are parsing the query response and we are uh, saving it in the operation log so we can actually review it right here. So if I run this, um, I should get a response back. Uh, with the information based on what's currently is in uh, the graph database. So if I go and right click and go into operation log, if I look at the query response, because we are writing to uh, to here, you can actually see uh, what is coming back. And you can get, um, you can limit the query based on the name. So in this case, we are getting back that latest one we just created, the elevator parts one to three, I've actually created it twice, so that's why you see it more than once. Uh, but that's basically the idea. So you can uh, do the query, you can post to the uh, graph database. It kind of gives you an idea how you do it using Jitterbit. It's pretty easy and straightforward with um, a few operations, decoupling, and you can just reuse, use the naming convention. So it's pretty clear what we're trying to do here. So that's it for today's demo. If you have any questions, please contact me. Thank you.